Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Yasudian, a consultant dermatologist based in the UK. Fungal nail infections are one of the commonest skin conditions that we encounter. However, its treatment is still suboptimal. Even with the best antifungal tablets, the cure rate is only about 60 to 70 percent. So when I saw an article this month in the journal Mycosis suggesting that combining an antiseriotic drug called acitretin with the usual antifungal medication, it caught my attention. Let's look at this manuscript in greater detail and see what we can learn from it. We all know that onychomycosis is a therapeutic challenge because of its high recurrence rate. It also requires prolonged courses and systemic rather than topical antifungal agents because of the thickening of fungal nails and this limits the penetration of tropical drugs. Onychomycosis affects the toenails more than the fingernails because of their slower growth, the reduced blood supply, and the dark, moist environments associated with footwear. Itraconazole is a commonly used treatment at a dose of 200 mg once daily for 12 weeks continuously. It can also be used as an intermittent pulse therapy at a dose of 200 mg twice daily for one week in every month. And this is repeated for two to three pulses in fingernails and three to four pulses in toenail onychomycosis. However, the complete cure rate still remains unsatisfactory. Even though onychomycosis is considered mainly a cosmetic problem, it can be uncomfortable and can lead to cellulitis in old adults and foot ulcers in those with diabetes. So how can an antiseriotic treatment like acitretin, which is a retinoid, help in fungal infections? The authors in this study hypothesized that systemic retinoids, especially acetretin, increases nail growth by accelerating the epidermal turnover, which in turn could help in onychomycosis treatment when used in combination with an antifungal drug. Retinoids also have proven immunomodulatory and fungistatic activity against dermatophytes and candida. It also has an effect on breaking biofilms and thus eliminating the offending fungus. In this study, 135 adults with different types of toe and fingernail onychomycosis were included. Patients were assigned into three equal groups with 45 patients in each group. Group A received oral itraconazole pulse therapy of 400 milligrams a day for one week in every month. Group B received oral acetretin of 25 milligrams every day. And group C received a combined pulse itraconazole and acetretin together. In the three groups, treatment was administered for three months for both finger and toenail onychomycosis. Follow-up of the patients was done every month for six months on clinical grounds. Microscopy with culture was repeated at the end of the six-month follow-up. The results were quite impressive for the combination treatment. When itraconazole was used on its own, the mycological cure rate, which is determined by fungal cultures, was about 51%. This is similar to figures from previous studies. In the acetretin only group, it was about 29%. However, when both medications were used together, the mycological cure rate was an impressive 80%. There was no recurrence at all in the combined regime, compared to 17 to 23% recurrence in the monotherapy groups. The images from the study were quite striking. This patient had total dystrophic onychomycosis of all the fingernails with complete cure of all the affected nails within three months. There was a good response to toenail fungal infections too. It would be unusual to get such a quick response in three months in the toes with itraconazole monotherapy. So what were the side effects? No adverse effects were reported in the group that took only itraconazole. In the other groups that took acetretin, chelitis or dry lips was noted in 20 patients of group B, which is about 44%, and in 26 patients in group C, which is about 57%. This higher incidence of chelitis in the combined group may be due to itraconazole inhibiting certain enzymes that in turn results in elevation of the plasma levels of acetretin. The main limitations of the study include the small sample size and the short follow-up period. Therefore, larger, well-controlled studies with acetretin combined with systemic antifungals, either in a concomitant or sequential manner, are necessary. It would also be interesting to assess its efficacy in different types of onychomycosis with a longer follow-up period.
The take-home points are that acetretin seems to be a promising therapeutic option for fungal nail infections when combined with an oral antifungal agent. It has the advantage of overcoming fungal resistance and minimizing recurrences of onychomycosis. I hope you found this information helpful. Thank you for listening and bye.